kinds of things I'm not sure about. It is a tangled and twisted thriller that will keep you guessing literally up to the last minute of the film. Now, the cast is great, especially Stacey and Brian. The story moves backward and forward from actual story to characters' versions of the event. <laughs> <laughs> The Rob Ash Show, featuring Drake University football. Head football coach Rob Ash and your host, Mick Trier. Brought to you in part by Capital City Buick, Des Moines' new value leaders. And by Home Team Pizza, free, fast delivery. It's a hit. And welcome to the Rob A. Show. Well, Coach, the Drake Bulldogs headed up to Wisconsin lacrosse, bottom end of a 14-7 score. What happened up there? We ran into a pretty good football team, Mick, but I wasn't displeased with our effort at all. I thought we played an excellent game, especially on defense. Uh, we held a very powerful offense to only 14 points. We shut them out in the second half, got some turnovers, but we couldn't convert. We got a lot of guys banged up in the process, so it was kind of a tough day in that respect. This certainly was a Wisconsin team that had some horses as you've been playing the last couple of weeks. Just a good football team with a good tradition, and they were excited about playing the Drake Bulldogs. Well, it was a great atmosphere for game, Mick. I mean, they do have a great tradition there. They have a nice stadium right on campus and a very enthusiastic crowd. I mean, their crowd is knowledgeable about football. They, they know what, uh, what to do to pump their team up. They were really loud on four and one and you know their band was into the game they were yelling at the officials I mean, it was really it was exciting because they really love football up there and they were excited to play Drake and I think our guys rose to the occasion and we gave that crowd uh, a great game and and we gave the uh, the lacrosse team all they could handle well we're looking forward to the highlights of course and we have the highlights coming up here on the Rob Ash show the Drake Bulldog, Bulldog game we'll do it right after this quality style Luxury. Everything you've come to expect from Buick. Selection. Service. Value. All you can expect when you visit Capital City Buick. From the Skylark to the Park Avenue Ultra, Capital City Buick offers Central Iowa's largest selection of new Buicks and has quietly built a reputation for genuine service, not pressure. Capital City Buick, Des Moines' new value leader. When Home Team Pizza delivers, we never know quite what to expect. But you know what to expect. Home Team Pizza's here! Yeah! Home Team Pizza's here with the new Huger Hughes 20 inch pizza. Right now, get a single topping for only $9.99. Pick up or free delivery in Greater Des Moines, Ames, and Ankeny. What they do is simple. So simple it would be easy to miss it altogether. But they're making a difference. You see, drunk driving fatalities are down 32% in the last 10 years. And fatalities from teen drunk driving are down 60%. So to everyone who checks an ID, offers to call a cab, or helps a customer know when to say when, we extend our thanks. By doing what's right, you are making things better. A message from Budweiser. To make a great Sunday brunch, start with a great view. Add something colorful and healthy. And don't forget to add something a little sinful. Add something steamy and delicious and really pile it on. Then make sure you add the right stuff, like good friends. Sunday morning at the Capitol View Dining Room. Brunch at the Best Western Starlight Village downtown once, and you'll be back for more. And welcome back to the Rob A. Show. Coach, I know that you and your assistant coaches, as the week went along last week, preparing for Wisconsin lacrosse, that you knew that this was going to be a good football team. Well, we saw some great things on tape, Nick. They're big and strong. They've got great skill positions, a six foot, six inch quarterback. We didn't see a lot of weaknesses. We were just hoping that being a balanced team ourselves, that we could match up with them and hang in there. You never know when you play a team for the first time exactly how you'll match up. And I guess I'm pretty satisfied that it was a hard fought close game and that with one minute left we were knocking on the door with a chance to win the game so I guess it was a pretty evenly matched up game. I was going to say certainly both teams had a chance to win this one especially we'll see in the highlights here in a second especially the Bulldogs late. We had a good chance late we would have tied the game if we'd gone for the uh, conversion but I think we would have we probably would have gone for two and gone for the win Mick. One minute left in the game that yeah, would have been what our guys would have wanted I think that's what we would have done. Well let's go to the highlights we mentioned earlier they were certainly excited about playing the Drake Bulldogs. Well they had a great crowd as I mentioned. They're 
bands out there on the field. It was a, a really a, a festive atmosphere, a lot of noise and a, a little bit distracting uh, potentially. And I thought our team came out of the blocks a little sluggish, you know, maybe just because it was a, you know, a strange surroundings. But then on third down of our first possession, uh, Jason Grabanski makes a nice catch. And then the second time we had a third down play, uh, Fletcher right on target to Charlie Schimberg. So we, we executed well on third down, got two uh, first downs. And then on the third uh, set of downs, we didn't get it done. We had to punt. And Brian Peck here with a great sky punt, we call it, down inside the 10. And then Mike McKee fights off the blocker there and, and downs the ball on the five yard line. Nice execution by our special teams. Uh, unfortunately, as I said, lacrosse has lots of weapons. There's an example right there of the speed that they have. Uh, normally, our linebacker will cover that guy pretty well, but he got out of there and, and made a good gain, got the field position changed. Jay Smirka here with a good sack. This is what I call a coverage sack. Great effort by Jace, but uh, you know they couldn't uh, find an open guy, and so he made the sack. There's another completion by Roy to uh, Grabanski. That's a great connection for us. Unfortunately, in the second half, those two guys were both injured. A nice catch there, throw and catch from Fletcher to Chad Hying. So we're having some success throwing the football, and then nice coverage there on a, on a key third down play, and uh, Grabanski couldn't haul it in. We had to uh, punt the ball away. Here's a big play. They had great success. Uh, getting the ball to number 44, the fullback, and you can see he's an outstanding player. But look who, who jumped on his back there, Jace Smirka, all the way from his defensive tackle position, hustling to, to uh, make a play. Unfortunately, they took it from that position on down in with a nice throw and then a, a hard power play. They had a, couple, had a couple tries down there before they finally scored, but they eventually powered it in. So they drew first blood with a 7-0 lead, thanks to a couple long passes. We still ran the ball pretty decent here after sort of figuring out what, uh, what we needed to do. There's Charlie Schimberg off tackle. Uh, Roy's making some choices at the line of scrimmage. Gives it to Schimberg again. Nice job here breaking a tackle. He's outweighed by about 40 pounds by that outside backer, but he made a nice gain. Then here's Rico Chapman with a really good cut at the line. And uh, our guys came back really nicely. This is our first drive right after the touchdown. Oh, watch at the top of the screen here, Grabanski starting to come off the line. You see that guy holding him? Uh, that penalty was called. That gave us a first down, kept the drive alive. And then here's a nice play if you watch uh, Chad Hying at the bottom of the screen. There's a bl uh, blitz, and Fletcher throws it quickly to him on the flag pattern. Chad makes the grab. He's having a great freshman year, Mick, already doing a super job for us, and that tied the game up. We answered on our very first drive right after their touchdown. That was a very big drive for us to make sure that we didn't lose the momentum to lacrosse. Our run defense was outstanding all day. We held lacrosse to about uh, uh, 85 yards, uh, trying to take the ball away from him there. Uh, you know, did a good job on the rushing defense. And then here's a nice pickoff by uh, B.J. Hellier. The ball was overthrown. B.J. was in the right spot. So we, we got the pick. Defense stopped him. We had another chance to go. Here's an excellent run by Rico Chapman. Unfortunately, right here at the end, number 75, ripped that ball away from him as he was going down. And uh, lacrosse uh, recovered. So we exchanged turnover for turnover there. And lacrosse got the football back. Back on defense again. Here's a nice job by our defense here. They wanted to throw some screen passes, and you can see how, how elusive uh, the quarterback was, but that time they, they made him pay. Matt Garbus with a great hit on their receiver, Harsey. And here's a good sack here from behind by Brian Peck. Again, a coverage sack where there was nobody to throw to, giving us time to get in there, and, and Brian made a nice play. Here we tried to go for the bomb. Fletcher slipped a little bit, and the ball was a little bit overthrown, and unfortunately we couldn't convert it, so we had to punt the ball away. Uh, this comes here, Mick, with about uh, three minutes left in the first half, and, and we're punting it down to uh, John Barrett. Now watch this guy. What an outstanding, exciting punt returner he is. Breaking tackles, picking the ball up on the bounce, first of all, then breaking some tackles, causing us to, to uh, you know, really gang tackle him to get him down. That was a scary play for us all day when we punted. So they had the ball now here with a couple of minutes left in the half. They third down and about seven, they hit the tight end, a guy they had not thrown to the whole first half, but they hit him there in a crucial situation. And then we run a blitz, look at Fuller coming. He gets to Barrett just, or gets to Kuzik, the quarterback, just a fraction of a second too late. And they hit the touchdown with probably only a minute left in the half. And that was too bad to give them that lead going into halftime. 14-7 halftime, back to take a look at the second half highlights. But first we need to show you some of our fine sponsors.
Coach, what was the mood in the locker room coming out for the second half? Well, we were a little down, I think, because of the touchdown right before the half, Mick, and I, I wasn't really sure how we would respond, but actually you're going to see the second half was a really good performance by our entire football team, especially the defense. Our quickness was really impressive. You can see we got a lot of people in there on uh, Kuzik, the quarterback, causing him to have to throw that one away, and uh, we got into kind of a punting contest here in the third quarter. Uh, both defenses doing a nice job. That one rolls into the end zone, so we, the, we stopped lacrosse right away to start the second half, but we had to punt it back. Now watch Tommy Becker at the bottom of the screen. He gets held. They called a penalty here. We didn't need the penalty because uh, number 32, Sean Swanepoel, who's a Wisconsin native, by the way, real excited to play. He causes a fumble. And Tommy Becker, even though he was held at the line of scrimmage, recovered it. So we got a big turnover. But here's one of the key plays of the football game. You're going to watch right after this turnover. We've got the chance, but Roy gets flushed out of the pocket. And look at the left of the screen at the top. You can see the linebacker running in there. And uh, even though the pass was incomplete, that's not the worst part. Um, as Roy finished his throw, uh, he got speared by that linebacker, helmet to helmet, and that knocked him out, suffered a concussion. Now, all of us on the Drake sideline really thought that that was a case where at least a spearing call should have been uh, made because of the fact that the guy led with his head. There's no place for that in football for uh, players to lead with the helmet. We try to coach it out, and it, it does cause people to get injured. And so Fletcher was out for the game, and, and uh, you know, it was, it was a, to put us in a tough spot. But our defense really rallied. There's Jeremy Fisher with an outstanding interception, great hands, really good catch there to, to get us going. Here's Ben Wolford, uh, Roy's replacement, fine runner. We changed our game plan a little bit now that Ben's in the game and he's running the football. We needed about nine yards for the first down. He got 10, uh, good play there, got us out of the hole and then we had to punt it away. Uh, defense still playing really well. Look at Matt Garvis right here in this sequence. Absolutely just immovable. Uh, tackled the tailback. And then here, Matt's coming from inside out right there. He tackles and makes a strip of the football. And Anthony Fuller picked it up, so the defense got the ball on the interception, also got the ball on the fumble, two turnovers in a row, and we're in good shape. Uh, Rico Chapman running the football here, spins and twists away, gets a few extra yards. This is an opportunity now for us to, to move down in, but if you look at the sticks at the top here, big play, fourth and one. Uh, we're all set for you know an important play, we're trying to run Charlie Schimberg off of right uh, tackle, but we had a mix-up in the backfield, the quarterback turned the wrong way, and, and uh, we didn't convert it. So that was a big play that lacrosse stopped us on fourth and one. Uh, they completed a pass, moved down here, and uh, looked like we might be in trouble, and then they made another mistake. And Eric Musha really quick on the spot there to recover another fumble, so the defense has gotten us four straight uh, possessions with turnovers, and unfortunately, uh, we gave them one back. And Chad Westberg there, number 83, was wide open. And uh, we didn't get, it, uh, didn't get it done. This is a nice stop by the defense. Lacrosse lined up in a third and three in their power set, tried to uh, uh, run for the first down. We stopped them. So going into fourth quarter action now, uh, you know, we're still down 14 to seven. We got to open it up. At this point in the game, Ben Wolford's really starting to play himself into uh, being relaxed and, and getting some things done. He hits Hoskins there. He hits uh, Westberg there with a really important third down pass. And if you watch this, a great pass here going over to the right to Robbie Berkeley. Boom. Right on the numbers, down and out. So there's three good completions in this drive by Ben getting us down. Now it's fourth and one. We go into a, a full house backfield of our own. And this is a play that I wouldn't try with Fletcher, but Ben's a good runner. Look at him. He's over 200 pounds, good runner. He stretches for the uh, first down. But then just the way our luck was going, I guess. But on the very next play, on first down in the red zone, the ball's a little bit behind our, our guy, that, uh, our uh, receiver. And their player comes up with a nice interception. So that, uh, that stopped that drive. And then the very first play, they tried to go for the big bomb. And even though I thought the ball landed on the ground there, they gave him a completion. Kerman can't believe it. None of us could. And uh, so things were looking a little grim. Our defense doesn't quit, though. They keep playing hard. Garvis making a tackle there. Uh, even though the, the uh, lacrosse was moving down, we had a lot of people around him with a good blitz there that they couldn't block. Even though they tackled Garvis, they, uh, the rest of the guys got in there. And then they got into a, uh, a long yardage situation in the fourth down, got a down and out, and not only were they short of the sticks, but they didn't catch the ball. So we got, a, we got the ball back for one last try here. Fourth quarter, we're still down by seven. Wolford drops back, another really good ball, deep out pattern to Rich Hoskins uh, for the completion. And here goes Ben again. I believe this is going to be a pass to Westberg, 83, who really made some good catches in this game. This ball's in traffic, but it's late. We've got to make a play. And even though Westberg really got rocked when he caught it, uh, that play was uh, complete. We've got a chance now. We're under two minutes to the game. This ball 
It was kind of an unusual pass. Ben got flushed out of the pocket, but it was incomplete. Now this is fourth down, our last offensive play of the game. We've got to get down to the stick. It's fourth and ten. Uh, ben checks the middle, and then he's supposed to hit uh, Schimberg coming out of the backfield. And unfortunately, Charlie got kind of twisted around there. Normally, I think he'd break that tackle and get the first down, but it was short. And so we ended up with a minute left, uh, not getting the first down, and, and the game was the final score, 14-7. to seven. Well, certainly the Bulldogs had an opportunity to win the game. Do you think maybe the, with the injuries, though, you didn't have quite the experience in there as you would have? Well, I don't want to make excuses, Mick. I mean, who knows what would have happened. We did a good job in this game of getting ourselves in a position to win the game at the end of the game. That's what you always want. I mean, we had that chance, and no matter who was on the field at the time, uh, that's what happened. We're down at the 10-yard line. If we convert the first down, there's still time for us to get four cracks at a touchdown. Like I said earlier, we would have gone for two. So we were there, and I, I think that's the most important thing. And to the Bulldogs' credit and coaching credit, the uh, Bulldogs continue to come back defensively, even if there was a turnover or whatever. They just kept fighting. I'm really proud of our defense for that. That was a, a, an outstanding offensive football team. We held them down extremely well. We did allow a few more passing yards than we would like to have allowed, but I think they had a great all-around passing game, so that's probably what it was due to. Let's take a look at the statistics here of this uh, football game, Coach. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this. A remarkable statistic, though, at the very bottom, uh, we had possession time, 34 minutes to 25 minutes. Uh, you know, that, I think that's, that shows that we have a good possession passing game, and our run game is pretty solid, and, and uh, we ran just about as many plays as they did. And You know, it was just a question of too many turnovers and uh, not quite enough efficiency in our pass game to match their, but theirs. But our defense did a, a very good job overall, holding them to 83 yards rushing, making them throw the ball, and to their credit, they came through. And we always take a look at the league standings as well, and boy, Dayton is looking tough. Well, Dayton had a fabulous win this, this week, uh, beating Towson State Division 1AA team. Evansville still rolling. They've got some good young players. Otherwise, it wasn't a real good week for our league because Valparaiso lost to Whitewater and Butler lost to Division Three Milliken in a, a kind of a shocking upset. So uh, mixed results from the league this week. Break down there at 1-1-1, one, one, and one, but there's a lot of season left. Well, the conference season is still what we're going to be shooting for, Mick, and I think we'll be ready when it comes for that time. Well, we'll take a break, and when we come back, we have our play of the game right after this. I've been doing this forever. I don't know how to do anything else. I'm not qualified. I can't, uh, I can hammer and stuff. I can tear stuff up. Favorite thing about stand-up comedy is when you have a great show and then people want their money back. <laughs> You'd really turn it on when you get on stage. That's what, that's what it's all about, that time on stage, that get up there and just do what you do, and then say thank you, good night, and don't talk to me after the show. <laughs> I, I hate people. I'm not a people person. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Are you looking for that just right place to hold your company's or club's Christmas party? Well, you found it at the Bavarian House Restaurant in Des Moines. With the cozy old world atmosphere that enhances the holiday spirit and the most delicious dishes in Des Moines. The Bavarian House features American favorites like prime rib and chicken, along with scrumptious German dishes and a dessert menu second to none. Call today to discuss your customized and personalized holiday party at the Bavarian House. 265-5611. That's 265-5611. This message brought to you by Preferred Risk Insurance, America's non-drinkers insurance company. If we can get all of the athletes and coaches in America buying into the, being all that God's created them to be, to understand that they are something special, then we can have an impact across America like no other group because the athletes and coaches have the strongest influence in America today than any other group. And one way to play, one way to play is rub free, one way to live, one way to be what God wants you to be. And welcome back to the Rob A. Show. Next up, our feature is our Capital City Buick Play of the Game. Here's head coach. Rob Ash. This week's play of the week is a touchdown pass from Roy Fletcher to Chad Hying in the second quarter of the game. It was an answer to the touchdown that uh, Wisconsin Lacrosse had just scored. Uh, Chad's right here in the slot, and you're going to see at the beginning of this play, he's going to signal in to Roy that he's getting man to man coverage from this defensive back here. What makes the play interesting, though, is at the beginning of the play, we've got a protection problem, and our fullback, Charlie Schimberg, has to block not only the nose guard, but also a linebacker. Two blocks on one play, just enough for Roy to get rid of the football, and Chad, man-to-man -man against the defensive back here, is able to uh, run the flag route and get into the end zone and score the touchdown. Uh, this is an example of uh, uh, what practice will do for us. We had run this play about seven or eight times in practice on Thursday just to get the timing down between Roy and Chad and uh, hoping that we'd get this situation with a blitz and man-to-man -man coverage. We got what we wanted. The two guys executed the play for a big touchdown in the game. 
Thanks, Coach. Good call. Next up, our home team pizza player interview. Here's Glenn Norman. Well, we're with the co-captain and the fine linebacker for the Drake Bulldogs, leading tackler for Drake, uh, the Minnesota product, Matt Garvis, joins us here. And Matt, a disappointing outcome today, but uh, boy, you held him in check the whole second half and, and gave the team a chance to win from the defensive standpoint. Yeah, we came out hard in the second half. I mean, we know the game's four quarters. That's what we've been preached by the coaches. Uh, today just wasn't meant to be. It was a tough loss, but next week got a roar and then Butler. What about the game plan coming in? This is, a, this is a very difficult team to defend. They've got a quarterback who's outstanding at 6'6", can see over the line of scrimmage, do a lot of things. They've got talented receivers, talented backs. So where do you start from a defensive game plan? Uh, well, we got good scouting <laughs> reports, but uh, we just try to get a focus. I mean, they're a 50-50 team, which is really difficult to defend. Uh, we get good scouting reports from the coaches, and uh, they prepared us well. And uh, we just didn't make the plays that we needed to today. What about the size up front? That also had to be a factor. They uh, they had some beef up front on both ends of the ball. It wasn't too bad after we played Missouri uh, the first game. Uh, these guys weren't as athletic, but they're, they're good and physical. Uh, not too much of a problem for us because uh, we, we use our speed. And uh, we thought we had them today, but just wasn't there. Yeah, that, that kind of leads me to my next question. You really did a pretty good job. It became a matter of trying to shuck, get rid of your blocks, and then use your quickness to your advantage. Yeah, that's what coaches told us. I mean, they, they told us they weren't as quick as Missouri. Uh, if you, you can beat them off the ball. Our defensive line did a really good job today, and uh, so did everybody else. But uh, they told us the defensive line and linebackers use their speed to get away from the blockers. And uh, I thought we did a pretty good job today. As we touched on a Minnesota product, I don't know if a lot of people know, of course, transfer from the University of Minnesota. How did that whole situation come about for those who don't know where you made the trek from, from Gopher Land to, uh, to uh, the home of the Bulldogs here? I know I always wanted to play Division One A football, so I decided to go there first. I was recruited in my senior year at a so senior in high school, and uh, decided to transfer just because uh, I just wanted to play football. I didn't care at that point in time where it was, and uh, they still uh, wanted me, I guess. And I still wanted to go there, so they allowed me to come back down. And, and what what was it that attracted you to Drake? Uh, was it just the opportunity to, to play full time, or, or were there special things about Drake that attracted you to Des Moines? Opportunity to play and uh, them going to the class of one double A helped me a lot, and uh, they have good academic school too. So it's a combination of things. What about the uh, entrance into a conference, Pioneer Football League? Now now whereas before there wasn't a lot to play for, perhaps now there's a Pioneer Football League title to shoot at year after year. What uh, what sort of effect did that have? Uh, it had somewhat of effect. I mean, it really didn't have my effect on me coming down here, but play, it plays a big part now that we have something to shoot for because before we weren't eligible for the playoffs. So, you know, we still got our shot at the conference title and hope we can get it. As we say, a, a, difficult, a difficult finish today and, and, and finishing up now 1-1-1 one, one, and one through the first three games of the year. But there's a lot of football yet to be played, a full conference season yet to play, and I know you got to be fired up for that. It's got seven games left, five games in conference, and we're shooting to go 5-0 and in conference, win the, the rest 2-0 uh, two and in non-conference. So uh, we have a good shot at the conference time, and I think we'll get it this year. And as a co-captain, that has to make you feel good that you were bestowed that honor, too, uh, by your teammates. Yeah, it is. I mean, it feels real good, but uh, you know, I don't feel too much different. But, I mean, it's nice that they have they give me the opportunity to be out here with the captain. A defensive leader and the Bulldogs' leading tackler, Matt Garvis, our guest today on the Rob Ash Show. And I thank you to Glenn Norman and Coach. I always remember a couple of years back when I went down to Drake practice and saw 55, and I said, man, this kid is awesome. And he continues to impress me each and every year. He's really getting better and better, Mick. Uh, the thing that he's improved the most this year is his pass drops, pass coverage. Uh, he really got better at that all last year. Started up, picked up where he left off, and so he's become a complete linebacker now. He makes tons of run stops, but he's making all the plays on bootlegs and waggles and pass drops, too. He's a very complete player, one of the best I've ever coached. How important is he to your defense? He's the key. I mean, when you play the 4-3, you've got to have a middle linebacker who can make plays, and Matt Garvis makes plays. Thank you, Coach. We'll be back with more of the Rob A. Show right after this. It's apparent when you arrive at Legends that you have come to a special place. West Des Moines' newest in-place is more than a sports bar. It's a sports grill or, more exact, a full-service family menu restaurant. We defy you to find a seat that doesn't have a comfortable TV viewing. What, with 21 TVs and two satellite dishes, you can relax, eat, drink, and enjoy watching your favorite sport. If that happens to be darts, we're sure you can find a game. Legends was named correctly. It already is. 60th and Ashworth Road, West Des Moines. Open at 11 a.m. daily. When home team pizza delivers, we never know quite what to expect. But 
you know what to expect. Home Team Pizza's here! Yeah! Home Team Pizza's here with the new Huger Hughes 20 inch pizza. Right now, get a single topping for only $9.99. Pick up or free delivery in Greater Des Moines, Ames, and Ankeny. Quality. Style. Luxury. Everything you've come to expect from Buick. Selection. Service. Value. All you can expect when you visit Capital City Buick. From the Skylark to the Park Avenue Ultra, Capital City Buick offers Central Iowa's largest selection of new Buicks and has quietly built a reputation for genuine service, not pressure. Capital City Buick, Des Moines' new value leader. Now let me get this straight. You want me to get up at 11.45 on Sunday morning, watch you guys on game day for an hour and 15 minutes, talking about all the upcoming games? Then watch all the games for six hours? Then turn back to watch you guys on prime time to wrap up all the games for another hour? In other words, over eight hours of non-stop football? Yeah! yeah. All right, I love it. And welcome back. Well, Coach, next up for the Drake Bulldogs, Aurora. Now, this is a team that's been a pretty good series for the Bulldogs. It really has, Mick. They started playing us in my second year at Drake, and we've played them five years in a row. Uh, and I give them credit. They don't back down from Drake, even though we're a larger school and all that. And a lot of teams have dropped us. Aurora has stayed there. They've been a constant rival for us, and it's been a good series. Hard fought. Drake, or the Aurora team now has lost a couple of games by a touchdown, and the first game, a very important uh, opponent. Well, I thought it was interesting. They played Albion College from Michigan in their first game this year. Albion won the Division III National Championship last year, and uh, this was the first game they had played since that championship game. And they're a good football team. Aurora played them right down to the wire, 21-14, to lost uh, the game towards the end of the game, uh, and it was a great football game. It shows you that Aurora's pretty tough and they'll play anybody hard. Coach, this is going to be another team that's physical like we've seen so far this year? That seems to be the, what, what a team has to be to get on our schedule. They've got to be rough and tumble. And Aurora has always impressed us with their physical defense. They're hard-hitting guys. Uh, they really play tough, hard-nosed football. And, you know, we've got to be ready to play no matter what their record is or anything else each time we play them. Coach, I've seen some improvement with the Drake Bulldogs. The tailbacks are running better, getting more pressure uh, from the defensive line. Defense really coming up and playing well right now. Well, I'm really exceptionally pleased with our defense performance against Wisconsin lacrosse because of the that's the best complete offense that we've played uh, so far this year. We've got a new challenge this week with Aurora because they're an option team and we haven't played any option teams all year so it's going to be a good challenge for our defense to, to come away from power football defending power football to defending option football and I hope that's a challenge that'll help them get really ready for the game. And the best part of this game it's at home. That it will be nice. It'll be nice to be back home. Hopefully we can have a good game to get ready for our conference season. Good luck to you coach. Thank you. Mick. We'll see you next week here with the Rob A Show.